Hello and welcome to beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. It's, it's great to have you here uh, in God's house, uh, ready to worship Him and sing His praises. Uh, our theme for this evening uh, is when we experience suffering or loss, especially problems that linger, we may be tempted to think that God may have forgotten about us, doesn't care about us, or maybe even is punishing us. Our epistle lesson for today reminds us that circumstances in this life do not dictate the believer's status before God. Instead, God showed his love by sending Jesus to suffer, die, and rise again for us, to take away our sin and death. Paul therefore confidently proclaims, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So let us sing our first song, Your Love, O Lord. Please stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God then dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. 
Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with the true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you you forgave forgave the iniquity iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And instead, by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O give thanks to the Lord, Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done. His miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, children of Jacob, his chosen ones, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Please be seated as we sing our next song forever.
The Old Testament reading for this, the eighth Sunday after Pentecost, comes to us from the book of Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter. For you are a people, holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession, out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. It was not because you were more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love on you and chose you. For you were the fewest of all peoples. But it is because the Lord loves you and is keeping the oath that he swore to your fathers, that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know, therefore, that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. The epistle reading comes from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, the eighth chapter, beginning at verse 28. St. Paul writes, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died, but more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel comes to us from St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They said to him, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house, who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. We continue now with the responsory. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. We continue by reciting the Ten Commandments. You You shall shall have have no other gods. gods. You You shall shall not misuse the name of the Lord Lord your God. God. 
Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or his maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Please join me now in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our song of the day, You Never Let Go. Yeah. 
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. David Rose worked at a garbage dump for 15 years, helping himself to whatever he could find in the dump. Now, most of the time, he discovered things that would qualify as, well, you guessed it, junk, trash, garbage. But one day, Rose discovered some unusual items that were bundled together. He discovered a top hat, a cigar, and some letters. And when he presented them on BBC's Antiques Roadshow in March of 2019, he learned that they belonged to former Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Yes, that Winston Churchill. The specialist told him that the trash that he had uncovered was worth more than $13,000. Now imagine sorting through trash to try to find some treasure. It just proves the fact that sometimes people are willing to endure quite a bit in the search for valuable things. And that truth finds its way into Christ's parables that we hear from today from Matthew's Gospel in which Jesus tells us this, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Our Lord follows that up with another parable, and he says again, The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. You and, I, that Jesus, you and I know that Jesus often uses parables, earthly stories, that serve to teach, illustrate, explain, and communicate complex theological and spiritual truths. And the parables generally fall into one or two categories, one of two categories. The first is about the Christian life and faith, and the second is about Jesus himself. So which category do the first two parables in today's gospel text, which do they fall into? We might be tempted to think it's the former. After all, the kingdom of heaven is worth, well, we can't measure its worth. It's worth far more than any earthly treasure, we know that for a fact. But we rarely treat it as such. We rarely treat it with as much affection and appreciation as the things of this world. And we certainly, as Paul said that he did, count everything as loss for the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ. In fact, we often shudder or despair at the thought of, lo- of the loss of all things, counting them, in rub- counting them as rubbish in order that we may gain Christ. And in addition, if that were enough, you and I cannot bargain, buy, or bribe our way into God's kingdom. So the first reading doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But if we see it in a Christological way, that is, if we see see Christ as the actor in the parable, the one doing the discovering, the covering, and the purchasing consistent. Biblical truths then fall into place. Jesus gave up, the second person of the Trinity gave up all that he had for us. 
We know and confess that the second person of the Trinity, begotten of his Father before all eternity, shrouded in light and in glory, stood at the Father's side and was always there. And through him, that is the second person of the Trinity, all things were made. Out of love, God created a beautiful, beautiful, glorious, perfect world. Gave his creatures a perfect home. But we know that because of our first parents' actions, that paradise was ruined and gave rise to corruption and resulted in decay, sin, and death. The thing is, though, is that God did not view this broken creation as trash that was simply to be discarded or forgotten about. No, at the right time, the second person of the Trinity leaves his eternal glory to take on human flesh. And out of of his own love and out of love from the Father's sending and plan, the Word of God becomes incarnate to reveal and and accomplish God's Word and promise. Namely, to shed his holy, precious blood, to suffer and die and rise again, and to buy back a people and a world captive to sin, death, and the power of the devil, just as God promised in Genesis 3.15, immediately after humanity's fall into sin. Now, because of the sinful nature, there's a problem, right? There's a problem. Paul argues all have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. Hear that word. Worthless. No one does good, not even one. But today's parable holds a big surprise. A huge surprise. Broken, miserable, worthless sinners are the treasure in the parable. You are the treasure in the parable. It means that all people are valuable to God. And this does not come from your goodness. This does not come from some sort of worth that you generate. It comes from God's undeserved goodness, mercy, love, and grace. Today's Old Testament lesson, the reading, helps to enforce that we are valuable to God and He loves us Because he has made certain promises. He wants us to receive the fulfillment of those promises. Which ultimately point to his salvation in Christ. So hear these words again from our Old Testament reading. The Lord did not set his affection on you and chose you because you were more numerous than other people. For you were the fewest. But it was because the Lord God loved you and kept the oath that he swore. Know, therefore, that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. And Paul also gives us these wonderful words from Romans 8 that you heard for today. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, then who can be against us? And how does God show that he is for us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, right? Who declares righteous. Who declares not guilty. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died, and more than that, who was raised who is at the right hand of God and indeed is interceding for us, right? Praying for us, pleading for us on our behalf. These are wonderful, wonderful words of comfort and assurance for you and for me. But you and I, the world, doesn't always treasure God's love in Christ. Some don't see it as treasure at all, but something simply to be discarded and thrown away like so much garbage. 
scrap or junk. But there is a lot at stake here. There's a lot at stake here. And so Jesus brings up the parable of the net. People are valuable to God and Christ. God purchased the world back. But from what? The parable of the net tells us and teaches that God's coming judgment against sin is very real. And he tells us that God at the end at, at the at the end judgment will sort the good from the bad. And so the question is how can you and I know whether we're good or bad? God's word answers that for us, right? The most well-known passage of the Bible answers that for us. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Shows us God's love and how he does it. Likewise, the author to the Hebrews encourages us to run the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And then he says this, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Scripture pays testimony and witness that God willingly and indeed joyfully rescued you from eternal wrath and condemnation, made you his treasured possession. How do you know that you are treasured? How can we receive it and believe it with joy? In the last part of the text for today, Jesus answers this question as well. And it might seem out of place. We're like, what's this doing here? Old and new treasures. What's this all about? But Jesus exhorts his disciples to use God's powerful word as the spirit-breathed tool to reveal God's salvation and love, right? And this word will include both Old and New Testaments. It must include the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament. These are the things that Jesus taught about, quoted, and they remain important because they point to the promised Savior who is to come. It anticipates action on behalf of God for the salvation of people, right? So it's needed. However, now, as Jesus, the Word of God, the fulfillment of that salvation and promise is here, the disciples are among those who hear the teaching and preaching, the words of the Word made flesh of Christ who is fulfilling those promises in the Old Testament, bringing them into reality. Through Him, in Him, for Him, by Him, these disciples will speak of sins forgiven and death overturned. They will proclaim sinners who are now saints because of Christ. They will proclaim, hey, you know that trash? That worthlessness that we carry because of our sinful nature? We are now treasure through God's love in Christ. They will proclaim that through our baptism and God-given faith, God has covered that field with His, perfect, His believers with perfect righteousness that is bestowed freely on them and given them faith. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, these men who hear these living words of Christ, these parables, these things that he's saying, will record those words down. Write what they've heard, what they've seen, what they've witnessed. And their message will be simple. The kingdom of God is here. It's here. God has, his, has accomplished his salvation in the person of Jesus Christ. And he's done it for you. He has proven His love. The riches of His love in Christ. And this Jesus didn't just go to suffer and die, right? He doesn't just buy the farm. 
that through this he buys the field. He redeems the earth and everyone in it. And this is to be proclaimed and taught and celebrated. Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house, Jesus says, who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we live in a world that has contempt and apathy for God's word, for the scriptures. Again, trashing it as it has little or... To them, it has little or no value. But for the faithful, God's word remains a treasure. A treasure for God's people because they teach us the valuable truth that poor, miserable sinners who deserve and will receive nothing but judgment and eternal fire without Christ, without Christ, do have a Savior. They do have Christ who has taken them off the garbage heap, the trash heap, the dump, and made you His own and brought you into the kingdom of God and its riches. Belonging to Winston Churchill once secured a man $13,000. Well, I don't know if he ever sold the items or not, but it could have. Those belonging to God are worth so much more to Him. You were bought with a price. God Himself sacrificed Himself for you, suffered for you, died for you, and rose for you. Through His Spirit, through His Word, we treasure knowing and believing just how much we are treasured by him. Amen. Now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and minds in faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, I invite you to stand as we continue with our offertory, giving thanks to God for all his blessings to us for the fruits of his creation.
We continue with the prayer of the church. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and a pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For seasonal weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For those who are married, that they may fulfill their vocation to honor, cherish, and love their spouse. For those who are single and desire to be married, that God will provide companionship according to His good and gracious will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For those in distress of mind, body, or soul, for the sick and the dying, and all those who have requested our prayers, including Craig and Susan Keppy, Pat Romsdahl, Don McCabe, Lynn Ring, Monterey Morse, Greg Eide, Teresa Driscoll, Heather Mum, Betty Jarrow, Jean Enright, Stacy Lorth, Claudia Schrader, Tracy Tripke, also Abel, Pedro, and Victoria, Marlon, Becky, and Dennis, Donald and Dee, Scott and Randy, Shelley and Ray, Mary and Carmi, Lisa, Annie, and Harold. Lloyd and Skip, Denise, Pam, and Rhonda, Irene and Ken Kaler, Pastor Al Eppin, Dennis and Deanna, Rako and Carter, Julian Pegg, Chelsea and Oliver, Maverick, Darlene, and Tom, Renee and Artis, Christina, Pam, Braden, Cameron, and Amy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Almighty and everlasting God, Thank you for the skill and gifts bestowed upon the surgeon and all who attended to Carol Herman during her hip replacement. Thank you for a loving and supporting family who are always there for her in this time of need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, you have given us this land. Make us always remember your generosity. Bless our land. Save us from violence, discord, confusion, pride, arrogance, and from every evil. Make us a united people. Defend our liberties and give those with authority the spirit of wisdom. When times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful. And in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have mercy. mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. Christ, Christ, have have mercy. mercy. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love, that receiving what you have promised, we may love what you have commanded. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray Luther's morning prayer together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our closing song. You are my all in all.
Just a couple of announcements that we need to make. Uh, Thursday at 10 a.m., don't forget quilting is in person this week. I'll uh, be happy to have you join us for that. Uh, Friday, coffee club at Randy's at 9 a.m. Uh, and Saturday, don't forget 10 a.m., beautiful garden. Uh, there are several items to be picked up uh, out there. Zucchini is coming in like gangbusters. So uh, if, you, if you could use some zucchini, come and get it, as they, as they say. Um, the Lord's blessings to you this week. Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? All right, well, then seeing none, Adam will come forward and, and dismiss you. Uh, have a great day and a great week in the Lord. Just the